Welcome to the St. Francis Fast Break. I'm Dan Griffin. It's Valentine's Day week here in Loretto and, of course, across the nation. The Northeast Conference theme has been love and basketball. Well, this year for the guys, they've been in love with the fast break and the three-pointer, hitting about eight threes per game. But the Red Flash are also lucky to have three big men that can pound it down low and have been making a huge impact this season. Luigi Laparel comes from France. Davidas Kuzavas, also known as DK, hails from Lithuania. And Mark Flagg? Well, he's all Philly. Cheese steaks, you got the Philly food, amazing. And uh, I try and bring a little Philly toughness to these big guys, so. They come from three different worlds. And while they're all fighting for playing time, they've developed a sort of brotherhood. All right, Luigi has the best left-hand hook I've ever seen in my life. I think DK is the one who, like, walked the, the artist. He's a good, like, always have a good walk ethic. So he's getting stronger, bigger. Because I remember, I think when I came for my visit, he was like a little bit skinnier. And when I came back, he was already big. And Mark Flack is just like, as, as I mentioned before, he's a young, talented guy who, who has big potentials if he has extra working attitude towards your future, man. The big men also have a great mentor, an assistant coach, Eric Taylor. Coach T, as he's known, was a physical center when he played for the Red Flash in the mid-90s. And he's instilling that same toughness on this group. Coach T taught me, well, for the past three years, to be physically ready, mentally ready, and always be, ready, in general, ready to play the game. DK, Luigi, and Mark are great teammates. They support each other on and off the court. Just don't ask him who's the best dunker. I had the most bounce. How many dunk you got? Yep. No, I had the most bounce. Did you, do you have, how many dunks do you have this season? I have like five. I'm the strongest. I, I don't know about the strongest one. I'm the strongest maybe, maybe. on the court. I'm the strongest Actually. on the court. Bigs on three. One, two, three. Bigs. Last Saturday was Legends Night for St. Francis women's basketball as they hung the banner for number 22 and all-time great Jess Zenoble. Here's a look back at Jess's special day, one she'll never forget. Please join us in welcoming back St. Francis legend Jess Zenoble. It's kind of surreal. Like, I, I still can't even believe it's happening. You know, when I was playing here, it was always Maurice Stokes, Maurice Stokes, you know, Maurice Stokes building, his jersey. Um, so for my name and my jersey to go up next to him, it, it's just a huge honor. Jess Zenobel returned to campus to see her number hang above the court that she dominated. Zenobel left St. Francis as the school's all-time leading scorer. She led the Red Flash to four straight Northeast Conference championships and is often credited with being the player who started the winning tradition. For people to say that, it, it's, 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 I mean, I, I never even thought of it that way. 20 years ago, our program, it, it was amazing. We were just starting to take off. Um, the year before I got here, the first conference championship they won. Um, so, you know, we had seven freshmen that came in with me, so we, they didn't know how we would do with a whole new team. Um, so we were all ready to start building the program up from our freshman year. and. You know, all of us just became family immediately and, and worked very hard together. As part of the 50th anniversary of women's basketball, St. Francis welcomed back Zenoble's old teammates and other women who brought a championship to Loretto. Pat Swing, Bridget Moore. We were like a family, um, not just on the court, but off the court. We spent all of our time together. Zenoble now works as a police detective and resides in Charlotte, North Carolina. I was injured two years ago in the line of duty, um, so definitely my faith and religion helped get me through that and pull, pull through that, and um, um, a lot of family from St. Francis reached out to me after that incident, and everyone stayed in contact. The NEC Swimming and Diving Championships are happening this weekend in East Meadow, New York. The Red Flash finished in third place last year. Well, for one St. Francis swimmer, it'll be a bittersweet ending to her career. Last year, the Red Flash broke school and conference records at the NEC Championships. Carolyn Kwan posted a new best in the 400 medley. Her teammate did the same in the 100-meter butterfly. Um, I think we're going to do pretty well. We've been working hard every day, come in, practice, get going. So I think it's 
going to be interesting. We have a lot of good competition, but we're also a strong team, so I'm hoping we can do some great things. In October, Bauman broke her own school record again, finishing the butterfly race in just over 56 seconds. I really like didn't even know what it was, so when I finished, everyone was like, wow, great job. I was like, oh, thanks. And then they're like, you broke the record. I was like, what? So yeah, it was pretty exciting. I had like no idea. So when I got out, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Bauman grew up in Vandergrift, Pennsylvania, which is about 60 miles from campus. Born into a family of swimmers, she first hit the pool at the age of four. I'm a really competitive person. I love competing. It's my favorite thing about the sport. And I like to see how other people compete and swim. I think like swimming and strokes and stuff is so cool. I just like the whole thing of it, like watching and like, wow, that's weird because like people swim differently but I, than I do. And like they're still super fast and like it's crazy how like their strokes are different, but they still do so much in the water. Sadly, this will most likely be her final competition. Bauman injured her shoulder earlier this season and will need to undergo surgery. Doctors told her she won't be able to compete next season, which would be her senior year. Yeah, it's like, I was kind of shocking because I was still planning on swimming next year, so it's kind of sad, but I think everything happens for a reason, so God was like, it's time to be done, so I'm done, but <laughs> it's a little sad just to be done for like ever. For now, Bauman is just focused on the NECs. Better than If I better my time, then that's pretty much all that matters to me. Place just comes with what it is, but that'd be pretty cool to be an NEC champ on the 100 fly. The Northeast Conference Swimming and Diving Championships wraps up on Sunday. You can catch all the action on NEC Front Row. Coming up on the St. Francis Fast Break, it's Rivalry Weekend in Loretto. We take a look at the men's and women's showdown against arch rival Robert Morris. When a student comes to St. Francis University, they come with gifts and talents that are unique to them. It's our role to help those students become the person that they are meant to be. game of basketball. It demands grit, toughness, competitiveness at the highest level. In the NEC, we've been overlooked, underrated. That just gives us more to prove. Well, it's a new brand of NEC basketball. A brand that defines us. A brand that tells our story. A brand that doesn't quit. Don't play for yourself. Play for the person next to you. 100% given, 100% of the time. And when there's nothing left, dig deep and find more. All in, ball out, let's get it. Welcome back, everybody, to the St. Francis Fast Break. We're here with head coach Susan robinson Fructal And, Coach, congratulations. Two uh, grinded-out style wins against uh, two very tough-minded teams. Yeah. Yes, Dan, you know, we obviously lost at CCSU and Bryant in our last go-around on the road. And you're right, those are two of the uh, traditionally year-to-year -year grittiest programs in the conference with two veteran coaches. So there's no surprise there that – they're, you know, their student athletes, their players are gonna, they're gonna come at you for 40 minutes, um, and that's the way it was. But I was really pleased and proud of our, our team, and our players for, uh, you know, being tough, being tough-minded, um, particularly down the stretch in the fourth quarters of those games, and you know we're getting to mid-February. And that's what it's going to take to continue to be successful this season. Well, it's going to be a tough weekend ahead. It's one of these quirky uh, no, uh, notches in the NEC schedule at FDU on Saturday afternoon. Home to Robert Morris, the arch rival, who is off to a, just a tremendous start in NEC play under the bright lights of ESPN3. At least you get the road end of it out of the way early, and you can kind of you can settle back into the routine. It's just a shorter 
conference road trip, but at least it's Saturday. You can leave Friday and kind of still stay in that same rhythm, so to speak. Yeah, uh, I think so. You know, we'll see FDU for the second time around. Uh, you know, played pretty well with them being here early in the conference season, but, you know, they're improved. Uh, we're improved, so it should be an, another really good game, tough game. Uh, they Pete Sinella is a veteran coach in this league. He knows personnel, and he's probably going to change some things from the last game plan. You know, we could see some different defenses, schemes. We might see a little more pressure in, in the full court, uh, particularly with his zone press. And so we have to – can't look ahead. Um, you know, we always treat each game – separately and go one by one knowing it's a two game weekend um, and you have to sort of prepare for both but at the same time you have to take care of the first game first first things first um, but yeah then we'll be looking forward to come back home play here Monday night should be a great atmosphere and we only have three weekend three weekends basically left in the conference play it's went really fast as it always does uh, but it's there's a lot of basketball to be played so one game at a time. Absolutely. And uh, Robert Morris, obviously no stranger to DeGaul Arena and that rivalry, I think. I, I believe you guys have played 84 times, and each team has won 42. It is the definition of a rivalry. And obviously, uh, you guys have met several times in the playoffs. It was the title game, and they're back. Uh, new look, but still same toughness and size and intensity. And they're going to, again, be one of the more defensively sound teams we come across. Yeah, I, I think they've played the best um, so far to me, uh, my personal opinion. They've played the best man, the half-court man-to-man defense in the conference, and that's uh, probably the biggest reason why they've been so successful. They have held teams down to sometimes 40-some points, 50-some points, low 60s all year long, and they're physical. And, you know, we'll definitely have to be – um, prepared mentally going into that matchup. Well, it's 7.04 tip on ESPN3 for those uh, web streaming uh, purposes. And, Coach, we hope to do it again next week. And we, we've been riding these 2-0 and weeks, and they sound pretty good. Let's keep it going. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Joined here by head coach Rob Krimmel. And, Coach, you guys are rolling right now. Five-game winning streak. Uh, ties your most from last year, and you jump into first place with two wins. Let's start with CCSU on Thursday, uh, nationally televised game on ESPNU, and you guys were able to get it done. Yeah, I thought we got off to a great start. You know, our guys, anytime you play in front of a national audience, you put the TV cameras out there, the guys get excited. But, you know, I thought we were able to – um, use that that emotion and that energy to get off to a good start and then really to start the second half to extend the lead and they, they came back on us and made it a little bit closer than I think the fans had wanted but it's a very talented team um, you know well coached team and certainly one of the best players in the league in Tyler Cole and you know, we, we were able to withstand that run and and finish the game the way we needed to finish and get some momentum going into Saturday. And then uh, tons of energy in the building on Saturday. First, Justin Noble's numbers retired, and then uh, you guys have a, a packed house and uh, came down to the wire, and you guys made enough plays at the end to defeat Bryant. Yeah, it was a great weekend. You know, Jess, Jess and I went to school together, and, and I had a chance to witness her greatness firsthand and, and how much and you know, she meant not only to the university and to the women's program, and to see her number retired is certainly a special honor for her. And for those of us that got a chance to see her play, it was, it was neat. Um, and then that energy that was created by the women uh, they won their game and then and for us to come back and, and and play the way we played for 40 minutes certainly is something that you know we need to continue to build on um, you know Bryant came in and they had beaten us up at their place so we knew we were going to be in for a dog fight and um, you know we got got up on them early and then again they made a run and we were able to make some plays down the stretch and certainly a great environment great great atmosphere you know the support that we had from the students and the community again um, you know, it was it was special, and our guys fed off it. You know, the, the the last minute of the game, you know, everybody was standing up, chanting defense, defense, and uh, I know our guys enjoyed that atmosphere, and hopefully, we can continue with that. Now, your team's mantra this year has been one and zero. You know, win the game that's in front of you. Uh, but certainly, you look at the NEC standings, and this week you got two of the top three teams that yeah. we're going to face. You know, they're 
only a few weeks left in the season. There's still a lot of basketball to be played. Um, you know, so we try to keep our guys focused on what's in front of them. And the most important thing is our next practice and then our next game. And certainly Robert Morris, you know, our, our in-state rival and, and a team that's playing really, really well. Um, also, got to make sure that we take care of business on Thursday and then put ourselves in a position to play on Saturday. But, you know, this time of the year, you want to play meaningful games and you want to be in those exciting games. And I know our guys will be ready. Our staff will have them prepared and, um, you know, a great opportunity to play some of the best teams in the Northeast Conference. So let's talk a little bit about this five-game win streak. Uh, certainly Keith Braxton, Jamal King are at the center of it, but uh, one guy that sometimes maybe gets overlooked who's one of the premier scorers in our conference is Isaiah Blackman. During your five-game win streak, he's averaging 17 points a game. Uh, just talk about what a difference in a, uh, an aggressive Isaiah makes. He's he's a talented kid, not just offensively but defensively. You know, he can play on both ends of the floor, and um, he's starting to get into a rhythm. And that's important when you have that third score um, and, and the consistency that he's playing with. You know, he's made some big shots for us in his career, and he's made some big shots during this streak. And um, you know, certainly Keith and Jamal have played well for us all year, and we've got some some contributions from a lot of different guys in this streak. You know, Andre hit some big shots for us. Luigi and Mark, you know, those guys have played well inside, and you know, the, the lift that Ramirez. Miles gave us a couple a uh, couple weeks ago against Sacred Heart. So it's important this time of the year. You know, your best players have to perform, but we need a couple other guys to step up and you know and to make plays for us. You know, in key stretches, whether it's a, a shot or a stop. But Isaiah gives us that versatility on both sides of the basketball, and it's certainly neat to see him play the way he's playing, especially with all he's had to go through with the injuries that he's faced. And um, you know, he's such a good kid, and he puts the time in that you know you like to see those results for the young man. Coach Krimmel certainly talks about the terrific fan support here in, in Loretto. And tonight, we battle first place Robert Morris, a red out. A red out. Wear red, be loud, and cheer on the red flash as we take on our in-state rival Robert Morris at 7 p.m. I really liked what I saw out there. Would you be the mascot for our next game? Right, right. Oh, Frankie, Frankie, it's not what you think. Frankie, come back. Welcome back to the St. Francis Fast Break. The women's tennis team at St. Francis is already a month into its season. After a handful of matches traveling across five states, the Red Flash finally have a home meet Sunday against Mount St. Mary's, the first Northeast Conference match of the season, under first-year head coach Lisa Swope. It's been challenging, but it's been exciting. With high school, you're doing a lot of fundamentals and techniques. It's nice to be with a group of kids who know exactly what the techniques are of tennis, and now it's just right, um, fine-tuning and making them into a team um, being able to play together. You have to go advanced into the mental state of the game and really work on building um, doubles teams, which usually isn't typical for these girls when they play high school tennis. And doubles is all about strategy, so that's a huge challenge at the college level. It does get as a grind when it's weekend after weekend, so this will be a nice um, morale booster for them to be able to like sleep in their dorms or sleep or sleep in their home beds and then get up and be on their courts. Um, so it should be a good it should be a good match. Last year we had to go to Monrovo, where which is like an hour and a half away. So it wasn't a like really home match it's like we never had like fans here. So we're really excited about that. We're like nervous because also we never had fans. So we're gonna see them but we're going we're pretty excited and we're like pumped up. We're so ready to play because we're gonna see a lot of people like going for us like fans. I was trying to work on my like conditioning more and also my mind, because I think mine is really 
important for tennis. So you have to be focused all the time. You need to know like what you're gonna do, and also condition is really important because sometimes if you win a match or you lose it, it depends on like how your condition is is at the moment. Like it, it doesn't matter if you're a better player or you're like worse. It depends on like how prepared you are and how your conditioning is for that match. It's a busy weekend in St. Francis Athletics, as we've already touched on the men's and women's basketball teams and the women's tennis team. Now let's take a look at two more teams in action this weekend, softball and women's lacrosse. After going 3-2 and two last weekend at Georgia Southern, softball heads to the East Carolina Pirate Clash this weekend. Haley Norton was named NEC Player of the Week after hitting 643 with two home runs and seven RBIs. When we step into that box, it's us against the pitcher, and we have to go into the box believing that we're better than the pitcher. And that's honestly what I do. I go in the box like very confident in my abilities, and, and I know that I'm going to beat the pitcher. Women's lacrosse gets its season started this weekend with a road test at Radford. The Red Flash were selected to finish fifth in the Northeast Conference, the highest preseason ranking by the program to date. Yeah, we did lose a lot of our, some big offensive threats last year, but we also have a lot of big threats coming in. Um, speaking from the attack side, I think it's going to be a really big year. We have a lot of offensive threats all around and we're well balanced and, you know, I think it's a good year. We won't have to rely on a few singular people. Um, we'll come together as a whole and pull it off. I, I, I took the job as a physical education instructor. At that time, it was a required course. And of course, basketball was the thing at St. Francis. So we needed a, it was called girls basketball, not women's, and we needed a girls basketball coach. So you're the phys ed person, you obviously know about the sport, it's yours. We were playing with six players. I mean, you were much too young to know this, but we were playing with six players, only two could play full court. And for about two years, that's what we did. And then thankfully, the game evolved to where we were gonna play five. And then we did get into a conference that put us in competition with, again, all these women's sports were growing. So it's not the pit of today, but we actually played pit at some point. Carnegie Mellon, uh, Carlo, Chatham, Bethany College, Washington and Jefferson, and we became the Penwood West Conference, and that gave us all a step up, and you could see the program was evolving a little bit more, so your schedules got a little, little longer. You know, now you're on a 20-game schedule maybe. Uh, you traveled a little bit more. You were starting to seek talent. You know, you were going and scouting and trying to find some talent and recruiting them to come to St. Francis University. My love was tennis, and St. Francis had six beautiful tennis courts. And it just was calling me that I needed to do something, and they gave me the opportunity to do whatever you want to do. You know, you're the one-man operation, so just go ahead and do it. It was a struggle. It was a struggle to get recognition for the women. Um, I think I worked with a lot of very strong young ladies who were determined, and I was determined. Um, we weren't going to be allowed not to do the things we were able to do. I mean, the fact that, you know, there's more than basketball, volleyball, and tennis, I mean, the swimming, the golf. Uh, in fact, one of my college friends' daughter was on a golf scholarship to St. Francis. So, you know, it, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see this. It, it's wonderful to see the progression that was made uh, on, on all sports, you know. I don't know if it's ever going to be the professional sports and for women like it is for men, but uh, certainly on the college level it has been a, a, a great thing, a great opportunity. St. Francis might be one of the smallest schools in all of Division I, but it's rich in culture. That's thanks in part to its heavy number of international student athletes. Here is one of those stories. I started love the game when I saw that I was good at it. When my coach told me I was 12 and my coach told me that I have a lot of opportunities in life to uh, grow as a player. That opportunity brought Atina Pagani from her homeland in Uruguay to Loreto, Pennsylvania, a 5,000 mile journey. As a teenager, Pagani said the game of field hockey was her life. She would travel nearly two hours, one way, just to practice. I love what I was doing and I did that because I knew that all the effort that I was putting in like playing, 
it will be like good for me in the future. Pagani played for the Argentinian under-18 national team and trained for the Youth Olympic Games in 2018. But in Argentina, her coaches wouldn't let her go to school while playing the game she loved. First thing, it was my dream to come to the United States, to United States to study. I never thought I could come to play and play sport and study too. I found St. Francis first and I talked to my coach and I loved uh, all that she said about this university. Also, she speaks Spanish, so that's why it makes, it makes, it makes things easy too. The freshman arrived on campus last summer. She said she experienced culture shock, but her teammates helped her get through it. As I started like learning English when I was six years old, but it's not the same to know like the language, like to learn the language and to live in a country where you have to speak it all the time. The first days I had a headache, a bad headache. I didn't know how to express myself and I didn't know how to talk sometimes. I had to answer because I was like scared too. This is also the first time she has experienced snow. I, I mean, we came here when it was summer, so that was really cool and okay. But now that it's cold, we are just, yeah, it's, uh, we are like freezing. What I miss from home is my family and my friends because they know all the things that I did, all the effort that I put to make this dream uh, for me to come true and I just miss them because when I play or when I ha when I have practice I just I just want them to see what I'm doing how happy I am That's going to do it for this edition of the St. Francis Fast Break. It's going to be a busy weekend once again inside the Gall Arena, starting with men's volleyball here on Saturday at 3 o'clock against Harvard. It'll be a red out on Saturday night as the men's basketball team takes on arch rival Robert Morris in what could be a first place showdown. Then on Monday night, ESPN3 is in town as the women's team takes on arch rival Robert Morris. They're coming in undefeated in the NEC. Should be a lot of fun and hope to see you inside the Gall Arena. For all of us here at the St. Francis Fast Break, go Red Flash.